Hey GearFax friends, today I'm reviewing a keyboard by a brand I've never heard before. It's Meik. Uh, it's written M-E-I-K-E. -E. I don't know if that's an English brand or from overseas, but anyway, this is what it looks like. Meiki? Meike? Never heard of it. So I can only kind of guess at how that's pronounced, but anyway, the model is the MK928, and it has quite a lot of features. It looks pretty good. First of all, it's got the pitch bend down here on the left. It's also got, and I was surprised to find this, touch sensitive keys. So even though it's got this outward appearance of a very entry level keyboard, it's actually got straight away two very good features there. Interestingly, it's also got percussion pads here too. These ones aren't pressure sensitive. There are a pretty strange selection of percussion sounds and that kind of hints at the weirdness that's to come when we start to go through the timbres and rhythms. It's got some pretty strange sounds. A lot of the voices you select will actually sound nothing like what they're intended to be or what they're said to be up here. And the rhythms are sometimes just plain bizarre. But I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It can actually make a really entertaining and amusing experience. Just before we get into it too, I'll point out that there are MIDI in and out sockets on the back, as well as a few other I.O. things that I'll show you at the end of this video, and that adds to the versatility of this keyboard. So we're zoomed in a little bit closer now, let's go to Tambro. we're on zero, which is our piano, obviously. I'm just going to run through a few random sounds. This sort of metallic sound uh, seems to come up a lot depending which sound you choose. Just slight variations. They are all different, all 100 sounds, but a lot of them have this FM metallic sort of sound to them. So I'm going to take it up quite a few voices now and sort of head to the more synthy things. There you go. Another virtually identical string sound to the one we heard earlier. This is another strange thing too, a lot of the organ sounds seem to decay quite suddenly, which is a little bit weird. Even when you press the sustain effect here, it doesn't seem to sustain really at all. So you can hear a slight change there. There's also a vibrato effect. You can hear that a little bit. This effect here is the split one, so this will give us two different sounds, but I think we have to select. There you go. So we've got our organ down low. Of course you have to learn how to play some decent keyboard first, but anyway, you get the idea. Two different voices. Let's keep going. A nice, very synthetic string sound there. Oh, okay, there's an organ sound that will actually sustain, and it's reasonably nice. And take off the vibrato. Oh, now, why has that completely changed? Oh, I know, because I switched off the split function. I like the way that one fades in, it's quite nice.
going through the bass sounds really brings it home how sort of detached from reality this keyboard is. This is the acoustic bass sound. Okay, then we've got 41 which is electronic bass. Okay, fingered bass comes next. I guess there's a vague resemblance there. Jazz bass. Mm, sounds a bit harsh for jazz bass. 44 is synth bass. Okay, all they've done is shorten the exact same sound there. Another synth bass and another synth bass. 48 is overdrive bass. And then there's another overdrive bass. And then it moves on to violin sounds. So if you ever get one of these, I'd recommend you just write down your favourite voices because going off these names will give you no indication of what you're going to get at all. And I kind of love that randomness, it's sort of crazy and charming. And the weirdness continues with this circular control here. I haven't even fully worked all these out, but there are things like one key here which... which just allows you to play a, a tune with one key. Why you would want to do that, I have no idea. And it's only Twinkle Twinkle Little Star too, you don't get anything else. Follow me. Is a function I have not worked out. Ensemble. <laughs> See, that's just dreadful. That's just going to play the tune and you try to play along with it. And again, only Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, nothing else. You can record a short melody too. Stop that and play it back. A usable feature. Very much in the tradition of Casio keyboards, we've got fingering options for controlling the rhythm as it plays. And I think there was a synchro start button here. There is, yep. So there are two modes of single fingering. I'm not sure what the difference is, but I'm sure it's going to be, you know, silly and annoying. Then there are the fingered chords, which is where you play your entire chord pattern, but the voice of the keyboard doesn't play through. It just controls the chord of that backing ensemble. Or you've got full chords there, which will play the sound of the keyboard, as well as changing the notes of that backing ensemble. Let's try that. So that's how rhythm control works. The pitch bend wheel does exactly what it's meant to do. But as far as I can see, there's no way to change its intensity. So it's just a step either way. You can't go up to a full octave or anything like that. So I'll finish off by having uh, listened to a few of the rhythms. We'll go straight to the cool ones. In other words, the electronic uh, dance oriented kind of beats, usually the most interesting to listen to. That's just weird. It sounds a bit like a primary school band just banging away on percussion instruments. And we'll hear the backing for this one. Strangely catchy. The back panel is surprisingly good. We've got MIDI in and out, as mentioned before. We've also got our audio out to the PA system there, headphone socket and power in. So nothing overly elaborate, but it gives you all the basics that you need, and all the components actually seem to be pretty good quality. Nothing remotely surprising along the bottom panel here, but it is nice to see that we've got battery power over there. And there's just one last thing I'll say about what's on the front panel, and that is these speakers. They actually look pretty good. We appear to have a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter there. I can only guess that they're genuine. Uh, it does boast of a bass boost system there, so if you believe that, then yeah, it's got a pretty good speaker system. It certainly sounds fine. It's just that the sounds it's projecting are just too weird, really, to make a good assessment. Anyway, as we take one last fly over, that's the Makey or Mecare. MK928, 
very strange keyboard only one of its type I've ever seen but there's no doubt that it's got quite a few good features there it appears to be reasonably well built I should point out too that the keys are kind of um, accordion like sort of spongy sort of key feel like I said they are velocity sensitive and not overly disagreeable they just feel a bit strange just like everything else with the MK928 strange is the watchword so I'll put up some links to some other strange keyboards that I've reviewed in the past guys thanks for liking commenting or subscribing you've been watching gear facts and I look forward to seeing you on the next review